Hello, I'm David Bliss, Associate Professor of Surgery at the University of Colorado School of Medicine and attending pediatric surgeon at Children's Hospital Colorado in Colorado Springs. I want to talk with you today about a recently published study involving a new pain management strategy after nest repair for pectus excavatum chest wall deformity. This novel technique, erector spinal plane block, has been a game changer in dealing with the very significant pain after nest repair for these patients. Now in way of background, the nest repair for pectus excavatum is simply the placement of a metal bar to elevate the sternum which allows the costal cartilage to reshape over three years and achieve a normal chest contour. Although the nest procedure quickly replaced the long used ravage operation which resected the deformed rib cartilage, pain has been a major challenge in patients undergoing nest repair. Over the two plus decades since the nest procedure became the accepted surgical treatment for pectus excavatum. Post-op pain has been addressed in many ways, none of which has been as successful as we would like. Patient-controlled intravenous anesthesia, or PCA, was one of the first strategies used, as well as paravertebral blocks. But at many centers, these methods gave way to, ep to thoracic epidural analgesia or cryoablation. But all of these approaches leave much to be desired. Thoracic epidural analgesia is confined to inpatient usage, carries the risk of rare catastrophic neurologic injury, and it may lead to longer hospital stays due to difficulty in transitioning from epidural analgesia treatment. Cryoanalgesia can result in up to a year of chest wall numbness and has the potential of nerve injury resulting in neuropathic pain. At Children's Hospital Colorado in Colorado Springs, Dr. Tom Strandness, one of our pediatric anesthesiologists, first used a rector spinal plane block to treat the severe postoperative pain after a NUSP procedure. The initial results were very impressive, and Children's Hospital Colorado on the Anschutz campus soon adopted a rector spinal plane analgesia too as their primary pain treatment method for this patient group. A rector spinal plane block introduced in 2016 is utilized for thoracic and abdominal postoperative pain control yielding excellent regional analgesia. Under ultrasound guidance, indwelling catheters can be placed at the time of operation and employed for days afterwards. The infusions can be continued in the outpatient setting since the block is not associated with hemodynamic fluctuations or the potential for respiratory compromise. Continuous ropivacaine 0.2% infusion is administered through bilateral rector spinal plane catheters. The patients remain on scheduled oral acetaminophen and ibuprofen, alternating every three hours. Oxycodone is prescribed as needed for pain, and oral diazepam is needed for anxiety and or muscle relaxation. In our study, we sought to compare erector spinal plane block to thoracic epidural analgesia in this patient population. 30 consecutive patients with severe pectus excavatum undergoing nest repair and placement of an erector spinal plane block were each paired to a cohort control patient managed with thoracic epidural analgesia. These control group patients were those on our Children's Hospital Colorado Anschutz campus, which in the past had primarily utilized thoracic epidural analgesia. Cohort patient match was defined by age plus or minus two years, gender, and CT pectus index plus or minus 15%. Study variables included hospital length of stay, pain scores, and pain medication usage as oral morphine equivalent. There were no significant differences in demographic or operative characteristics between the two groups. Pain scores and oral morphine equivalent pain medication usage were higher for the first two postoperative days in the rector spinal plane block group. The oxycodone use was still very acceptable though and amounted to standard dosing every four to six hours for several days. Most importantly, the average hospital length of stay was nearly one day shorter for erector spinal plane block patients who were discharged home with the catheter in place until removal at five to seven days postoperatively. There were no differences in remission rates, postoperative ED visits, and postoperative patient phone calls related to the surgery. Erector spinal plane block provides several advantages. It avoids the potential for neurologic injury of other regional analgesia methods and the infusion can be continued in the outpatient setting. 
Excellent pain relief can be accomplished with a shorter hospital stay as compared to thoracic epidural analgesia. Also, an often difficult transition to other pain management from thoracic epidural analgesia is avoided. Foley catheter usage can be discontinued shortly after operation or avoided altogether in contrast to its frequent and more lengthy use in thoracic epidural analgesia. The hospital length of stay after nuss repair and erector spinal plane analgesia also compares favorably to reported hospital length of stay after nuss repair and cryoablation. The disadvantages are few. The erector spinal plane catheter risks include dislodgement, infection, and local anesthetic toxicity. Anecdotally, we have noted a significant learning curve to erector spinal plane catheter placement, so a skilled pediatric anesthesiologist is critical. Patients occasionally complain of mild discomfort at the catheter exit site, but overall, we have found the catheter and overline dressing to be well tolerated. Families are typically very comfortable removing these catheters at home after hospital discharge, which saves an additional clinic visit. We are excited to report that the problem of severe pain after nest repair can now be addressed with erector spinal plane analgesia, typically with very good success. This has been Dr. Dave Bliss at Children's Hospital Colorado in Colorado Springs. For more information, please give us a call or visit the link on the screen.